All right, so far so good. We were able to integrate MongoDB, write some code to have a basic connection with MongoDB. Although we can stop this tutorial right here, but I want to take it one step further so that I can give you some of the assignments and talk in between detail of how things happens in the authentication system. It's not really a complex one. It's really the basic start of it. There is surely a lot of room for improvement, but I'll suggest you some of the improvements and behind the scene as well as assignments so that you can also work on with that. This tutorial will be totally complete when we'll be able to send some data, receive some data and do some processing in between. That's exactly what we are gonna be doing up here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So whenever we create these kinds of application, we obviously need to build a model first. And model is nothing, it's just a representation of how our data is going to look like in the database, of course, in the MongoDB. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new folder and I'm gonna call this one as model. There's a lot of debate about it. Call it as model or models. Uh, you can go with whatever you like. I'm gonna open up my terminal because the best way to create a file is actually through the terminal. Otherwise your files get misplaced here and there outside and all of that. So this is always a great idea to do that through the terminal. And I'll be saying, hey, go inside the model and what should be the file name? Now, in this case, we are just registering the user. So I'll just say user.js. Again, there is a lot of debate about should we call it as user with a capital U or just users. I just go with the lowercase all of this and with the singular one. So I'll just hit enter. And there we go, inside the model, we have now this new file user.js. Now for the user.js, there is not too much thing required and I'll suggest you and refer you some documentation where you can study. So first of all, this entire thing will be based on mongoose. So this is what we need. And we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, I require just the mongoose. The mongoose acts as an in-between layer when you talk from your JavaScript code to MongoDB. You can directly actually interact with it but it's better to use Mongoose because it adds an additional layer of easeability. Yes, that's also a word. So let me go ahead and walk you through with that. So I'll just go on to this one. So we're gonna learn about Mongoose. And if you go ahead and take a look on Mongoose and read the docs, uh, there's a lot of things that how the modeling of the data can be done. So there's a lot of things, not here actually, the Mongoose schema and model here. So you can see there is a lot of things where you can go ahead and look for model, can query it, can get back data onto it. And there's so much onto this. In fact, if you click on the validations, you'll find that there is so much of validation you can do out of the box. So these are the list of all the things. Like if you want to find out that the email should be unique or not, there should be some validation. You can go ahead and play around with that. Reading this documentation is really fantastic. If I'll create a tutorial based on Mongoose, I'll surely go more in depth. Right now, let's go ahead. This much is enough. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So, uh, nope, just wanted to close this one here. And there we go. So once we have the mongoose, then we are gonna simply go ahead and create a user uh, schema. This is how you go ahead and do this. Now this schema is, uh, you can name this anything. This is basically just a variable. Then we simply go ahead and say, hey, I wanna use mongoose. And inside this mongoose, there is a dot schema. And there we go. Now again, it actually sometimes say, hey, I want to use default mongoose. I have already gone ahead and I should be actually uh, changing it. So that typo, mongoose, copy that, paste that, and now we can get rid of this line. On a slight mistake there. All right, come on, there we go. So inside this, this is just a method and inside this method, you can pass on a big list of objects. This is nothing much more than all the parameters you want to insert in your database. For example, we can go ahead and say first, uh, name all lowercase maybe that's the way and then you can pass on an object uh, you can just type on and say hey this would be a string that is also allowed but you can pass on as an object and can provide more things like for example i want to provide a type of this one the type of this data is going to be string and then put up a comma and you can add more values like what should be the default value i want to say that default value should be null now here is where the validation actually comes into the picture and you can try out that what more validation you can put up like for example you can have your cast errors and all these things just like this object uh, you want to add only numbers and stuff yes you can go ahead and read more about them what I'll do is I'll just make a couple of copies of this one so that we can have. So we'll have first name, maybe last name, email, password, and a token, which will come as an assignment for you. So first name, and then we are going to have a simple last name. This is default string. I'm okay with that. Then probably let's get email. That's also a string. I don't want to have a default. You can have, like, I don't want to have a default in this one. I want to have another property, which is a unique, which will be true. The moment you set the unique value as true, 
Uh, that means we don't have to write extra code. <clears throat> Every time a document is being created or an attempt to make a document inside the database is done, then it goes ahead and look for this email field and automatically see that whether this email already exists or not. So I don't have to write extra code. That's the power of Mongoose. And we'll also have the password. Of course, we will be storing this password into an encrypted format. We'll work through with that. And then we simply go ahead and say, hey, this will be string. Uh, we don't want to have a default in this one. Now, this one will be token and maybe in the later on some videos or something, if I'll talk more about the details of tokens or refresh token or something, then it will be done uh, much more. Uh, right now, I want to just put up a comment. Uh, this will be an assignment. Assignment. So uh, we will not be inserting any data in token. Uh, deliberately, we'll be skipping it so that in the version where you are making it, you can go ahead and work on with that. Authentication can be done really into an it itself tutorial where I can talk about how the refresh token works, how the forgot password work, how the recovery password works, reset password works, and all of these details. Uh, right now, I think this is more than enough for us to go ahead and work with that. The final thing that you have to do is simply go ahead for module.exports and you have to export that. Now, there is a very special syntax how you export these mongoose files. These are not regular JavaScript files that you can go ahead and export. You have to say mongoose.model and then you have to provide two things into this one. What is your schema and what you're calling this one? So these are two important things. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to call this one as uh, simply user. And again, make sure this is always singular. There's a reason behind it. And what is the uh, schema that you're providing? So schema is really simple. This is my schema, user schema. You can copy it and paste it. There we go. The reason for calling it as user always, because when you actually add any schema into MongoDB, automatically <laughs> MongoDB makes them as plural. So you will not find it as user in the database. It will be more as users. That's it. Really simple. Nothing much to be worried on that part. All right. So this is what we got as user. So we can just go ahead and close this one. Now here, uh, we need to actually install a few more uh, packages and have to work on with this one. So Express is there. Uh, that's fine. But we need some data that needs to come from the front end itself. So maybe that's a postman or anything. So for that, we have to add a couple of additional properties. Uh, in fact, a middleware, I'll talk about middleware in the later on videos, uh, but for right now in this tutorial only. So first and foremost that you have to do is call up this express and have to say JSON. The moment you go ahead and save this JSON, that means now our application will be able to inject a middleware between and between the request is being sent and is being processed, now it will be able to understand the JSON format. So that's all it does. Now, similar to this, you can go ahead and uh, use a couple of more packages. I'll show you that as well. Okay, uh, so this is all. That's the basic as of now. Uh, now let's go ahead and create a request and see what we have to do. We have to plan an action, uh, action plan for that. So this will be app.post, simply post because we want to accept some data. So some data will be coming up through the form or from whatever the resources. And let's just go ahead and call this one as a register, okay? And then we have to provide a simple request. So we are gonna go ahead and call this one as request and response. So request is the object that is coming up, response is the object that I'll send to the user, and then we'll throw up as a, just like this. Now, since this is a database operation, that means we have to register a user, make a fresh entry into a database, this operation will happen in the database. And as I always say, database is always in another continent. Now, this is not always true in all cases. There might be in the same VPC, but the idea behind the sentence that the database is always in another continent is to remind you that whenever a database call is being made, it always takes some time. So that is why whenever there is a database operation, something like that, uh, it is common to have an async request. So I just always recommend everybody to use that. Okay. Now, since this is a uh, database operation, obviously there is a chance of failure as well. So we're going to go ahead and simply have a try catch statement. First of all, we are going to handle the error and then we are going to make an, a simple action plan of what is going to happen and how it should happen. And again, your action plan of how to deal with the data may differ from mine. So let's go ahead and do a simple uh, console log. I'll just say, hey, log the error. And again, there could be a better way of handling the errors. Right now, we don't want to go into that. Uh, that much of depth. Okay, so let's make an action plan. So what do you want to do? So step number one is uh, get all data. So that is my first step. And maybe from where you want to get the data? I want to get the data from the body. Get data from body. 
Okay, uh, it might come from the URL as well. We need to see that how that comes from the URL in some another video in our request.params. This is my first step. And then on the second step, we'll say that uh, all the data should exist. So all the data uh, should exist, oops, should exist, if I can write that. That is the only check we are doing, but you can do more follow-up uh, check whether that uh, the data is in the correct format, the email is in the correct format. But once you understand how this is being done, you can do more checks there. Once this has been done, then we can go ahead and check, uh, uh, simply check if user already uh, exists. Obviously, it's a registration operation, so we need to first check whether user is already registered in our database or not. So if he's registered, we will not move forward. Assuming that the user didn't exist, then we are going to go ahead and encrypt the password. Obviously, we don't want to store the password in clear text format. So that's the next second step. All right, uh, so after encrypting the password, uh, what we want to do is save the user. So we'll just say, uh, save the user in uh, DB. DB, okay, all right. And after that, once this is all being done, uh, maybe we want to also generate a token. Now, this is where your action plan might differ. Maybe you want to don't want to do anything. Maybe you want to re redirect the user on login page. It's all up to you. Once the user is being saved, uh, we will say, uh, generate a token for user and send it. It will give us a little bit more understanding of how things can be done. So that is a better step. Uh, once we understand the token part, I'll give you some assignment that how the tokens are being generated, how you can send them and how you can use environment variables for that and whatnot. So we'll be working on that part. All right, so this looks uh, great and fantastic. Now all we gotta do is have some action plan, but first, a couple of uh, changes that we have to actually go ahead and make this one. Uh, the first one being that we need to encrypt the password. Uh, that is the first worry that we have. And also in the register, we are just sending the token back to the user. But in the login, we will also need to uh, store these user uh, tokens into the cookies of the user. And one of the best way is to send server side cookies. So we need to have some cookie parser as well. So in the next phase, we will understand about a couple of libraries, not libraries, the packages of NPM that will help us to do all of this. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.